Our reading today is interesting because it starts the way many of our uh, readings do that include angels, with them asking us to not be afraid. I guess uh, angels were a little horrific at times, I'm sure. Even our most picturesque angels with the light shining and the flying, I think, might instill fear, might uh, shake us up. But I think perhaps it's more than that. I think perhaps this uh, call to not fear is a general, maybe, prescription for how we may eventually find some joy in our lives. I know today, in the midst of this pandemic that's seemingly never-ending, that disrupts many of our lives, has killed so many people, brought so much grief and sadness to the world, that we may sometimes wonder, what exactly is joy? Is, are all the calls to joy, all the promises of joy in Scripture just fading fantasy? Is it something that maybe we glimpse once or twice in our lives? And I think those questions are good questions. Having some doubt can be very healing in a way because it calls on us to reflect on our worldview, how we go about living. And indeed, I think the things that bring fear into our lives often do that as well. The challenges, the strife, they bring up, kick up all sorts of stuff within all the dust, all the clouds, all the skeletons, <laughs> the pain, that we may not even know where it's coming from, but it seems to be maybe tied to our past, maybe tied to our life in some way. And as these challenges, as these things kick up this fear and this pain and this uncertainty and these doubts, I think we start to realize, hopefully eventually, at least we're called to realize in our scripture, that that way of living, that identification with that scared mind is never really going to serve us. It's never going to serve us. It's that so-called egoic mind, whether it's humble or humiliated, we all have it. <laughs> whether it feels put on the spot and anxious or feels dominating and controlling and anxious as well. <laughs> I think we all carry that around, and that is what fear is when it sees the light of God shining from an angel. It's that sense of dividedness, that identification with our body, our minds. We might die, we, we'll lose this or that, all those worries that are kicked up. And then we start to realize through challenges often, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I don't want to live in a space so full of turmoil, even if the world around me seems chaotic. And that's why I love our Advent theme. Because I, th I think they call us to a modality that starts to shed naturally, not through a lot of battle, but naturally some of those things within that hamper our joy that cause us so much strife. As we learn in Scripture, we are called to center on loving compassion, called to love others, even our enemies as ourselves. We're called to peace, to worship the Prince of Peace, the Princess of Peace within, the divinity, the one God, the one consciousness that ultimately, I think we all share at our core, and that Jesus embodied in his life. And as we turn to these qualities within, through prayerful practice, through meditative practice, through just being present in our daily work and gardening, connection with others, I think we start to get that sense, oh, love my neighbor as myself because they are myself. We're less centered on this divisive mindset where we have this picture of self we have to defend all the time. 
in a way we open ourselves to the natural love that's already there, at least we're told it's there. We don't have to go building it up. You know, that might seem impossible. I have to build up so much love and compassion and joy too. Whoa, you know, <laughs> some hope. But no, the promise actually is that our consciousness is those things. It works through those things. It's connected to eternity itself. The only reason we even have a desire to wake up and think and connect is a love. Some kind of love gets us moving. Without love, as Swedenborg says, we wouldn't move at all. <laughs> we wouldn't move at all. Even if it's a love for just comfort. I love not feeling pain. So there's that. But there are deeper loves, we're told, at the core of that consciousness. That those peripheral loves are actually filtering down, and although we cover it up with our false limitation of self in our head, that picture that we think of so often, we can connect back to it by worshiping the living God, known by many names, by living in the present moment and opening ourselves to compassion and consciousness together. And yes, I believe that turning towards these qualities opens us up to our final one today, and that is joy. It's interesting because we know even in Christ's life that we all have to go through really tough times at times. Maybe not quite as tough as some, or not nearly as tough as some, seemingly. But essentially anything that keeps us in that head sphere where we're turned away from life, our own life, and the joy to be found in it, is a type of hell. A type of hell that we continuously create. We're often not given very good tools to let go of it. I mean, if you think back to your childhood, I'm sure you were taught some lessons that maybe supported that hell or started forming it for you. Sense of disconnection, of not being cared for or loved. And indeed, to turn to these qualities is to turn towards God knowing that God has these things for us, has love for us, has a peace settled for us within we are cared for by the Divine One. And we're intrinsically linked. And indeed, if you think about it, if everyone's core consciousness is from this divinity, if we're one in Christ, as Christ asks us to be one in Him and one in the Father, then there's a loving God behind every eye, even if the mind behind those eyes isn't always the most loving. And so remembering that in each other, I think, is almost the, the meaning of the season for some of us. That community we feel with others, even those we might have lost, that connection that's still there, knowing as we learn about ourselves over time, that they are intrinsically one with God. And as we enjoy that community, as we enjoy that life within, I think we find joy in those moments. And so yes, that smile you share with a friend, that moment of warmth with family this Christmas season, hopefully, those long gone and those to come, our God shining through perhaps in more fullness than we sometimes get accustomed to. But that same fullness of connection can be found in any moment within our spirit. That we are called to celebrate the living God in our midst. The shepherds were called to find joy. They were told they will have joy. And this joy was for all people, not just Christians, not just human beings. Maybe. I'm, I'm including aliens in this sermon. But for all people, that there's something about God incarnating 
that helps all of us. Something about allowing God's advent in our own lives, perhaps, that empowers the universe a little bit more clearly, let's say. A little bit more clearly. And helps it to find joy. Helps us to find joy. And so today, let's lean into those practices together. Let's find some of that peace within. It's there. Even as we watch our minds do its thing, the fear, rambling. I think even amidst that, as we open ourselves to the space, to the fullness of God, we can see some of the peace through the blinders, (laughs) through the clouds. We can feel the sky instead of feeling lost in the mist. And we can feel the warmth despite sometimes the cold outside. Let's take a moment, closing our eyes as we feel cold. Taking a few present breaths. Allowing our breathing, maybe the feeling of our hands, the feet, our body to bring us out of the ruminating for a moment. Further into the light of peace, of the moment. opening ourselves for compassion for ourselves. To compassion for ourselves and even more fullness for a moment as we realize perhaps our sense of division is an illusion. Something we're often taught. Reflecting on how maybe Swedenborg was right, that heaven is a unity in God, just as Jesus said, and that it's made more perfect by greater diversity, by greater fullness of humanity, connected to love and peace and hope and joy and all the attributes that we hear define God that we indeed use often as God's name. And also celebrating our manger story today. The joy of the innocence of God. An innocence from wisdom, a centeredness on wholeness, on life. Enduring with us and in history our trauma, our pain, the strength that we all feel in those moments, or that we all have but may not quite be aware of. compassion that we all 
see in each other's face, even when we ourselves don't quite feel it. And the source of our joy, our bliss, even in those moments that seem purely external that bring us joy, with some semblance of God, God's peace in it, God's love. And the God that enables us, each of us, to let go of the things clouding that joy, the loves that we might say don't serve us, attachments, yearnings that stem from a sense of division, of a lack. Allow that God to heal us, to ready us for the eternal resurrection, the eternal life that's already at the core of our spirit. Shut up.